Glenn Campbell will likely be forever remembered as one of the best to ever grace the country music scene. Sadly, the country music legend spent the last few years of his life as a shadow of his former self due to the worsening effects of his Alzheimer's disease. Join Facts First as Glenn Campbell's wife speaks out years after his death. On August 8, 2017, country music legend Glenn Campbell passed away. Understandably, the news created a wave of sadness amongst not only fans of country music, but amongst his family. This included his fourth and final wife, Kim. Kim was devastated by the loss of her husband, but Glenn's death had been a long time coming. For years leading to his death, Kim was forced to watch her husband slowly waste away from Alzheimer's disease. By the point when it was finally time to give goodbyes, the man she knew and loved was barely there. Glenn was diagnosed with Alzheimer's nearly a decade before his passing, and Kim knew after the diagnosis that it was only going to be a short period of time before he was dead. With doom on the horizon, one might assume that Glenn retired from performing so he could be there with his family and make the most out of his final years, but he did his best to keep performing for as long as he could. A few years after Glenn's passing, his widow announced she was working on a museum to commemorate him. Kim Campbell paid tribute to her husband with the creation of the Glenn Campbell Museum in Nashville. It served not only as a way for Kim to pay tribute to her late husband, but also as a way for her to relive many of her greatest memories with him. Though Kim already had prepared herself for the loss of Glenn following his diagnosis, creating this museum after his passing was a necessary part of accepting that he was really gone. Creating the museum was a rewarding challenge. According to Kim Campbell, it was mildly heartbreaking to put her hands on the surplus of memorabilia that she needed to sort through to create the Glen Campbell Museum. Each piece of memorabilia she touched provided a link to her dead husband and opened up memories of their time together. At first, this made her sad, but it eventually became a cathartic experience. By the time the museum was ready to be opened to the public, she felt as if a weight had been lifted from her. In the wake of his passing, Glenn Campbell remains one of the most notable icons to have graced the country music scene. He got his start working as a guitarist for a studio band called The Wrecking Crew. In the 60s, he became a solo performer. With hits like Rhinestone Cowboy, Glenn took the world of country music by storm and became a crossover sensation. In 1969, he was given his own show on CBS called The Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. He was already a big deal, but the series' popularity made him an even bigger success. The show lasted for four seasons and helped made the niche genre of country music into a national sensation. The Glen Campbell Museum features the assortment of costumes and other music-related memorabilia that one would expect, but it also features some remnants of the late Glen Campbell's non-musical endeavors. Glenn was an avid golfer, though he never considered the sport anything more than a hobby. He had an impressive collection of clubs, and this collection now resides in the museum. You'll also find his 2001 World Series ring there. Those wondering how he came into possession of it, it was via his part ownership of the Arizona Diamondback. Some of the proceeds from the museum go to Abe's Garden, which is the facility where Glenn spent the final years of his life. Another amount of proceeds goes to the Kim and Glenn Campbell Foundation, which does work in music therapy. The Rhinestone Stage Keeps Country Music Alive Another notable thing that the museum features is a modest performance venue called the Rhinestone Stage. It was one of the aspects of the creation of the museum that Kim was most passionate about. It serves as a location for up-and-coming Nashville artists to try their hand at performing in front of a crowd. The creation of the venue was special for Kim for obvious reasons, given her husband's passion for country music. But it has added some poignancy for Kim due to the fact that her three children have followed in their father's footsteps. Those three children are Cal, Ashley, and Shannon. All three have become musicians. Like his father during his early career, Cal is a studio musician who works with notable artists. One of the people he's worked with is Beck. Meanwhile, Shannon is the member of her own rock and roll band. Of Glenn and Kim's three children, Ashley is the one who's followed in Glenn's footsteps the closest. She's become a solo country artist in her own right. She's released her own country album called The Lonely One, which features her singing and playing banjo. Ashley likes to keep her music fairly traditional. This is something that was instilled in her by her late father. Ashley came of age dreaming of working in theater. She studied it while attending Pepperdine University in California. It was during prep for a performance in college that she learned banjo. How Ashley Came to Mirror Her Father 
Ashley graduated from college in 2009, and then because of the banjo playing skills she had incidentally picked up along the way, she received an interesting offer from her father. Glenn asked his daughter if she'd be willing to come with him and his band to tour Australia and New Zealand. He needed a banjo player and felt there could be no better prospective choice than his own daughter. Ashley eventually decided to take the opportunity to tour with her father. A year later, Glenn was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Following the diagnosis, Ashley prolonged her tenure with her father's band so she could be there alongside him, both to spend time with him and to help out. Ashley knew keeping her father's love of music alive was one of the best things she could do to ward off the worsening effects of his Alzheimer's disease. In addition to performing with him both on and off stage, Ashley also took her father to musical performances for as long as it remained feasible. According to her, the last concert she could take her father to was one put on by the Americana band Punch Brothers. Though the effect of the Alzheimer's disease had notably impaired her father's ability to pay attention to music by this point, she claims he gave each song a standing ovation. Like her mother, Ashley claims she was somewhat relieved by the time her father finally passed away. It had been a long time coming, and it was hard to watch him morph into a shell of his former self. When she was growing up, she was sheltered from her father's fame. She grew up in Phoenix, and according to her, one of the first times that she realized her father's fame was when he lent his voice to Don Bluth's cult classic animated movie, Rockadoodle. When Ashley got older, she discovered a newfound appreciation for her father's musicianship via videos of his old performances on YouTube. According to Ashley, she was particularly wowed by videos of her father playing alongside musical legends like Johnny Cash and Ray Charles. Early in his career, Glenn was a session musician who worked on recordings with luminaries such as Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, and the Beach Boys. He can be heard performing guitar on Sinatra's Strangers in the Night, Elvis's Viva Las Vegas, and the Beach Boys' seminal album Pet Sounds. He also performed lead guitar on The Monkees' I'm a Believer. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Glenn Campbell's widow created a museum in her late husband's honor? Let us know in the comments section below.